Welcome to another episode of the Financial Armor Show. My name is Brad Cooper, and I'm the president of Cooper Financial Investments. And I want to welcome my co-host, Tony Shore. Hi, Tony. How are you doing today? Oh, Brad, I am doing great. Good to be here with you once again. I'm excited. Uh, you and I started the year off uh, in a great way. Uh, with a big financial conference in, in Nashville or Nash Vegas, as I like to call it. <laughs> uh, and I thought it went very well. And uh, I know you spoke and offered some insights to your fellow advisors. And they had a few hundred of the, some of the top advisors in the country were there in financial minds. I thought it went pretty well. And uh, I had a good time. How about you, Brad? Oh my gosh, Tony. It was so great to see you. Uh you know, last week as well, be in Nashville, which is a great city. The only complaint I really have, you know, coming from Arizona, flew into Nashville, it was one degree and there's this white stuff all over the grass and all over the roads. <laughs> I think they call that snow and ice. So yeah. other than being very, very cold, because, you know, us Arizonians are out acclimated to, you know, the um, warm and cold weather now, it was a wonderful experience. Um, you know, once a year, we have a big event like this in January. Then we have another event normally in June or July. But uh, just to be surrounded by some of the top advisors in the United States, uh, not only to be able to share with them and our successes and what we have done, but also just to, you know, pick their brains and find out what's working with them. And uh, one of the most enjoyable events of the year for me and um uh, we had a good three to four solid days of training. Also, too, which I think maybe you said in this session, too, uh, we got an update from our money managers and also an analyst uh, from BMO, Brian Belsky. If you don't know oh, that name, yeah. Google Brian Belsky. He has uh, uh, been in this industry for 30 plus years. He heads BMO's Canada and U.S. division. He's an analyst. So all the updates that we received, and I get this question, Tony, often on a daily basis in my practice is, you know, what are you hearing, Brad? Is the sky going to fall? You know, all I'm hearing in the media is gloom and doom. Yeah. You know, China's coming in, the dollar's gone away. Politics, which I do agree, is a complete mess. And we have a major presidential election this year. So, the updates, I know that we heard from these experts, and these are experts and money managers that have been around for 20, 30 plus years, and they've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. And what is pretty optimistic is their forecast, Tony, for the next five to seven years is positive. They believe that we're going to see, you know, five to seven good more years in the market before we see more of a downturn again, like we had in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. And so there is so much going on out there. Like you say, it, it's a political year. Uh, there's a lot happening. Uh, a lot's been happening with finances. Fortunately, inflation isn't as high as it was uh, a year ago. And we have that uh, going for us, I guess. And maybe interest rates are holding steady, but you just don't know. Nobody has a crystal no. ball. And that's why you have to plan for it, right? So uh, we're talking about a, a big aspect of retirement income planning on today's show, aren't right. we? That's right. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Social Security. And a lot of you may be referring to Social Security as maybe social insecurity <laughs> for <laughs> yeah. many reasons. And we talked about this before. <laughs> why would it be social insecurity? Well, if you Google Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, by the year 2033, almost every website will tell you, unless the government steps in, by the way, they will, these programs will be bankrupt. The government is not going to allow that to happen. I don't However, think it is either. I don't no. think it is either. But there are doom and gloom people out there like this guy who says it so eloquently. Here's another truth. Social Security is dying. <laughs> so so true and um you know our philosophy is you know hope for the best plan for the worst but sure. um, uh but where we're at as a country and this feeds into the forecast too that we received uh we're still pretty healthy right now yes sure. our deficits 34 trillion plus that's going to continue to grow will we have concerns in another seven to ten years absolutely but uh 
you know, social security is not going away. Medicare, Medicaid is not going away. No. So uh, today we they'll, they'll talk- find a way to shore, shore up that, right? That that's right. And yeah. uh, usually they do that in one of two ways. Um, they're going to plug in that printing machine, which I wish I had access to just for maybe <laughs> yeah. 30 seconds that never runs out of ink that prints money, you know, billions by the second. Yeah. <laughs> or, and this is going to happen. They're going to increase taxes regardless of what president, what Congress yeah. uh, is in Republican, Democrat taxes will increase to help offset that deficit and shortfall. But well, today, Tony, we're going to talk about the power of social security. And uh, I just read an article from the Century Foundation uh, back in June of 2022 that just popped up. And uh, they basically said nearly nine out of 10 people, 65 or older, nine out of 10 people, 65 or older were receiving and are receiving social security benefits. That's a big percentage, 90%. Yeah. And um, four essential elements they discuss in this article, which I want to talk about, is how to harness the power of Social Security. And, you know, the first is your Social Security tally begins climbing from the first moment you pay into the system. That may date back to age 16, 18, 20, 30. Whenever you start working, that's one of the many taxes that you have probably noticed coming out of your paycheck. (laughs) My youngest daughter, uh, I'll never forget, she got a job. I think she was 16 or 17. And she was so excited, Tony, until she got her paycheck. Oh, (laughs) And then she brought her paycheck stuff home. And she said, Dad, what's FICO? What's, you know, (laughs) what's FICO and federal income tax and state income tax? What? is all these deductions about they they took about a hundred dollars out of my paycheck that's not fair dad (laughs) (laughs) welcome to the real world right oh and i think that's exactly what i told her welcome to reality in the real world but uh you know (laughs) yeah but uh but your paycheck is subject to social security tax that is currently 12.4 percent of your salary so 12.4% 12.4% of your salary is going toward social security, which is a big amount. So that's another reason I feel is though sometimes I am pessimistic that I am optimistic. It's not going away. Will it change? Absolutely. Will they increase the full retirement age in the future? Most likely they will, but it's not going away. Uh, but also you pay six to 6.2% employer pays six. So if you're working with a corporation of the 12.4 total social security money that's allocated, you're only paying 6.2% and your employer's paying the other half. Yeah. Unless you're self-employed or own your own business, then you're paying the full amount, right? Brad Cooper. You're yours truly. (laughs) I get to pay the full 12.4%, um, which, um, uh, that's another reason why it better not go away. Or maybe if it does go away, Tony, you think they'll reimburse us all the money we paid in? <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard no. That's a hard no. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the article goes on. It says you pay that tax on money. You make up to 2024 cap of $168,600. So what a lot of people don't realize is there's taxes, there's money that you have to have deducted. And then another topic, which we may not get time to talk about when you retire, the taxation on the social security on top of that, which is not fair, but it's a reality. Wow. Wow. So, so so what's next? In addition to that, uh, you've probably heard of social security, the years you work, the credits, you know, you can receive up to four credits if you make at least an income, $6,920. So the goal is to build up so many credits to obtain your full amount of Social Security when you do obtain the age of full retirement age and eligible for benefits once you receive 40 credits. That's the magic sure. number. And Why are we talking about this? Why is that important? Uh, I'll just use myself for an example. For many years, when our 
two daughters were young and growing up. Uh, my wife and I made the decision and uh, I really respect her decision. Uh, she's much smarter than me. She could have done anything with her life. Of course, she has almost a master's degree, very educated, but she chose to be a stay at home mom, which sure. I think was priceless for our daughters. So there was many, many years that she paid none into social security and had no credits. So yeah. if you're in that situation, there is solutions to maybe catching up on those credits, call our office and let us know because there's a lot of people in that situation. Some of our clients uh, that have been retired for years, we have a lot of uh, spouses maybe that didn't work their career. Of course, 50, 60 years ago, it was very common for wives not to work and stay home with their 10 to 15 children they had. The times sure. have changed. <laughs> yeah, times have changed. That's for sure. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying they're for the better, but uh, they have changed um, yeah. for that. Uh, but also, um, in addition to that, the second element this article talks about, Tony, is um, the second element of harnessing the power of Social Security is really to grow your salary. And as your salary increases, the amount of future potential social security benefits will increase as well. And it's amazing. Uh, we work with a lot of retirees, pre-retirees, and a lot of the reports that we're doing, uh, and one of the uh, free reports that we offer is a social security maximization report, which I know you're familiar yeah. with. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and a lot of uh, reports we're running now, Tony, that uh, from husband and wife that worked the last 30 years, made good money. Some of their benefits now are 4,000 each per month, 8,000 wow. total, almost a hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. You really want to maximize those higher earning years because they will drive up that social security amount that you collect once you're in retirement or once you file for social security. And you really want to maximize that. You mentioned the social security maximization report, Brad, and we're going right. to let our listeners know how they can get that report run here a little bit later in the show. But everybody's situation is different, right? You know, absolutely. Uh, and that's, I'm glad you brought that up, Tony, because everyone's situation is different. And here's what I found over the last 10 to 15 years, especially in, in my career, the last 30 years is don't make the mistake a lot of people do. You get to age 62, you have the option to take Social Security, or maybe you're 65, 66, and you're outside your house on a beautiful sunny day, and you're talking to your neighbor, Bob. You know, Bob's been a plumber for the last 30 years and he's saying, Tony, you need to take your social security now because that's what I did. And you don't do any more research and you take his advice. You may have made the right decision. Most likely you did not. There is literally thousands of different options to consider when you're looking and considering filing for social security and making that wrong decision and going past the 12 month mark could cost you tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow. Throughout your retirement. Yeah. Over the lifetime of your retirement, it can make a huge difference and you have to take into account what you have when you need it. Uh, what your life expectancy is. You have to look at all those factors. And I know that's what you do for your clients. And you run this report that does over 20,000 calculations to find right. the sweet spot for them in particular. And our listeners can have that done as well. Now, um, obviously, uh, we're going to be talking about that here. I know the third uh, part of this is um, a full retirement age and when you file, right? That's right. And uh the article clearly states in bold font, uh, 62 years old is not your full retirement age. <laughs> However, a lot of people you, think it is. You, that's correct. You can apply for Social Security at 62. However, several things to consider. 25% reduction, number one, from your full retirement age benefit. So you're taking a big hit, then if you're still working, you're going to be penalized and taxed substantially on that amount until you reach your full retirement age. 
So is it wrong to file for Social Security at 62? Maybe not. And I'm going to use this for an example. My brother-in-law, he uh, retired from the military for 20 years and fought for our country. He then worked with a uh, state office for 20 years, had a second retirement, got to the age of 62. He was just burned out, ready to retire, health-wise not the greatest. So he decided to file for Social Security at 62. Was that the right decision? In his case, it was. In another case, waiting till maybe full retirement age, maybe waiting till age 70. So it's not black and white. And every situation, every person's situation is different in many ways. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, yeah. Uh, 62 is not your full retirement <laughs> age. And, and, uh, I, I read an article recently that said the majority of people file for social security, which is most of us file at age 62 as early as possible. Right. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, well over 50, between 50 and 80%, uh, file, uh, at, at 62. Uh, and a lot of those people are living until 90, 95, a hundred. So they're taking a haircut and leaving tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table by doing that. So, uh, it, for some people, it makes sense if you don't have longevity, you know, if you have a history of cancer mm -hmm. or you have a lot of health issues or you absolutely don't have enough money saved and you can't continue to work, some people have to take it as soon as possible. But not everybody, uh, not everybody who files, that's for sure <laughs> at 60. That's right. And, th and that's a high percentage. And there's yeah. so many other factors. And, you know, one thing I learned many years ago is uh, other than maybe neighbors and family members for advice. Another big source that people seek for advice is the Social Security office. And there's a federal law that states that they cannot give advice on when to take it. They can give you the amounts right. and the various options, but right. that's one of the top sources that people go to. So it's so important on this topic because Social Security is one of the biggest income sources for retirees today in the United States. And yeah. making that wrong decision could be detrimental to your retirement plan. So before making that decision, make sure not only your financial advisor, your financial service professional, make sure that they have the resources, the teams like we do of social security experts that know the laws inside and out. They know all the options and get all the facts up front before you make that very important decision. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's crucial. So full retirement age um, is is interesting. I mean, for most people now, it's either 66 or 67 or somewhere in between, right? That's right. If you were born, Tony, between 1943 and 1954, your full retirement age is 66. But if you were born in 1955, it's 66 in two months and then eventually 66 and 10 months for me and probably for you as well, 67 is our full retirement age. And I'm yep. sure they're going to change that to eventually get up to age 70 for, you know, the younger generation just to extend yeah. that out. So let, let's talk a little bit about full retirement age. What does that mean? When you hit full retirement age, whether it's 66, 67, that means that you're able to receive a hundred percent of the benefits that you're entitled to from what you paid in and what credits you have in the social security system. That's the full. And then also you're not penalized by the IRS. So let's say you're 66, that's your full retirement age. You're wanting to continue to work. Yes, you'll have to pay taxes on that social security, but you won't be penalized because you took it prior to then. Okay. Yeah. And that makes sense, uh, obviously. So, um, you know, it rolls up uh, and you can even have it roll up uh, more if you wait from your full retirement age to age 70, correct? That's right. Uh, from 66 in this example, Tony, if that's your full retirement age to age 70, every year you defer your social security, you're increasing it by 8% per year, wow. which is a pretty good return. 
And uh, here's probably the biggest reason why we're recommending a lot of our clients to defer to age 70. Uh, one example I'll share with you is in our practice, with the help of our CPA team, we do a lot of tax planning sure. with our clients. They're doing some major conversions to tax-free accounts from IRAs, 401ks to tax-free accounts. So anytime you pull money out of an IRA, 401k, that's considered income. And basically that's going to throw you up in some cases to a higher tax bracket, sometimes not. So we're trying to get a lot of the IRAs, 401ks converted to tax-free accounts. Then once that's over, then let's kick in social security and enjoy that higher benefit for the rest of your life. And not only that, not only do you have a higher benefit at age 70, but throughout your life, especially if you're married, if you pass away, your spouse will get to keep the higher of the two social security checks. Yeah. So it's another benefit for your surviving spouse if you're married. Yeah. So letting it roll up is a benefit to the surviving spouse as well. Now, uh, you're talking about basically when to file and why that's important. Um, but once you file, uh, are you locked in or can, uh, can you change it? You're pretty much locked in, aren't you? You are locked in. But here's just what happened last week, Tony. Uh, uh, had a client. Uh, we just met. He's a new client. But before we met, um, he decided, you know what? I'm full retirement age. I'm going to apply for my social security benefit and start next month. So I said, that's great. And we advised him to do that. And here's what happened, which is pretty interesting. He contacted the social security office and he got in touch with a wonderful social security worker there. And they said to my client, here's an option you have because you can go back 12 months and make some changes if you want. They said, we're approaching a 12 month period, but if you go back to your earlier age, you could start receiving social security benefits. We would calculate it. Your benefit will be a hundred dollars per month less, but then we will send you a check for, in his case, $14,500 because of what he missed out on the last, uh, I think, 11 Interesting. months. Yeah. So I share that with you. Uh, let's look at it a different way. Let's say that, um, Tony, uh, I know you're not at this age yet, but in another, what, 50 years, you'll be at your full <laughs> retirement age. All right. Let, let's just say you're a full retirement age and you say, I, um, I'm filing for my social security benefit. That's what I want to do. And let's say for the next seven, eight, nine, 10 months, you are receiving that social security check in each month, faithfully in your checking account. Then we meet. And then as we talk and you review the social security maximization report and find out other, you know, options that you weren't aware of, Brad, can I make a change now? Or is it too late? If it's been within 12 months, you can pay back the social security benefits that you were paid and defer your filing. But and that's a very, yeah, that's a very risky proposition that I bet very few people do. So really, very once you few. file, you're locked in, unless there is that 12-month leeway period yeah. where you can reverse it, but you have to pay back every cent you you've do. been paid. Yeah. It doesn't happen often, but it has happened in the past. Uh, so that, but here's another thing uh, I want to share before uh, we get done here uh, today is there's another benefit uh, for spouses widows, widowers. And there is cases where if you lose a spouse at age 60, if you meet the you know guidelines of the social security, you can start receiving survivor spousal benefits. And okay. a lot of people are not aware of that you got to be married at least 10 years before losing your spouse, or if you go through a divorce as well. But let me tell you how important this is. And I know we don't have enough time to get into the details of this, but uh, I'll never forget a few years ago, I met with a wonderful, very sharp client now. And um, 
he knew more about the financial industry than a lot of financial planners and advisors. And uh, he shared with me, he was 67 years old when we met. He shared with me that he lost his wife. She passed away when she was 57 and he was 58. They were married for 25 years. And he has done everything right. We helped him with some other investments. But then I asked him the question. I said, how long have you started? How long have you received Social Security? Since age 60, he looked at me and said, no, I just started two months ago, Brad. He had no idea that he could have filed for spousal Social Security benefits, survivorship. He missed out on, we calculated over a $150,000. Oh, lost ouch. Wow. So if you are a widow or a widower and you're under or approaching age 60 or around 60 years of age, if you're not aware of these guidelines and these benefits, reach out to us. And there's so much out there that people just don't know. And they're not getting the right advice in most cases from what we're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. That's very concerning. A lot to know with social security, a lot of money can be left on the table or yeah. missed out on uh, some costly mistakes that could have a big impact on your retirement. So I encourage our listeners to give you a call, have that maximization report run. Right. Brad, how can our listeners get a hold of you? Very simple, uh, Tony. You can, uh, Visit our website, which is financialarmorshow.com, financialarmorshow.com. If you go to our website, not only can you see past episodes, but you can fill out a contact form and say, I am interested in receiving a free social security maximization report. Or you can do it the old fashioned way, pick up the phone. We're there Monday through Friday. We will answer your call, 520-543-8345. Again, that's 520-543-8345. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brad. And listeners, thanks for joining in. That does it for today's episode of the Financial Armor Show with our host, Brad Cooper. Thank you, Tony. See you next week.